a bird feeder for your fine feathered friends. Why water seems warmer once you're used to it. Follow your nose for a taste sensation. And keep it cool using the power of evaporation. But first, Giovanni and Michael have found a new use for this stuff. Those two are a great team, a bit like Velcro. Giovanni and I want to go at Dad's dartboard. But we're not allowed to play unless he's watching. He says pointy darts are too dangerous. But here's an idea. What about using Velcro to make a sticky target? We can't hurt anyone with a fuzzy dart. Let's get to work. OK, we have a disc of cardboard and lots of this cool Velcro tape. Each half has an adhesive backing. We also need a ruler, scissors, a roll of string, and a ping pong ball. Let's get building. Phew! It's hot sitting here in the sun. It's time for a swim. Oh, it's absolutely freezing! Well, there's only one way to get into a cold pool. Quickly! Ah, feels much better now. But why? I'm going to find out how my body adjusts to warm and cold. I have three bowls of water with three different temperatures. This one is very cold. The middle one is room temperature. And the far one is very warm. I'll get Patrick to put his hand in this bowl of icy water. And keep it there for one minute. Now with his eyes closed, I'll take his hand and pop it into the middle bowl. I bet that water feels warmer. Now I'll take his other hand and put it into my very warm water. Pretty warm, hey? I'll leave my brave volunteer for one minute. Now close your eyes and I'll put his hand into the middle bowl again. Does that feel cold? It feels cold after the warm water, but it felt warm after the cold water. That's right, Carrie ann when you plunge a hand into cold water, tiny nerve receptors in the skin send lots of signals to the brain telling it about the change in temperature. But after a short while, the nerve receptors accept the new temperature as normal and send fewer signals to the brain. That's how your body adjusts to warm and cold, whether your hand's in a bowl or your body's in a freezing cold pool. Let's see. One hand in the warm water Hey! <laughs> now my poor hand really doesn't know if it's warm or cold. <laughs> the brain must be pretty clever to understand all those speedy signals. Michael's brain sure is. Look what it's invented. Giovanni and I are building our own Velcro dartboard. OK, first I'll divide the cardboard into eight equal sized segments. Like eight pieces of pie. Now, using the hardest, spiky side of the Velcro tape, I mark the shape of the pieces I need to cut to make four rows of Velcro in each slice of pie. Now cut them to size, peel off the backing tape, and stick them into place. This is how it should look. OK, we have two colours of Velcro, so let's do half the pie slices white and half black. There. Very professional. Let's put a dot in the middle. Now colour it in. That's the bullseye. It'll see plenty of action with me playing. Now we just need to make a special Velcro missile. <laughs> I love bird watching. But my back gets sore watching them from down here. I'll have to coax my birdie friends down to ground level. And this crust of bread should do the trick. Come on, birds. Oh dear. The birds will never come.
come down with these guys pinching their food. I think I need to get my food above ground level. Thought so. I know, I'll make a bird feeder. Here's all the stuff I'll need. First I'll mark holes here for the perch and about four small slits in the side. And I'll need two holes at the top. Now I'll get mum to do the dangerous scissor work. Hurry up, I've got mouse to feed. Thank you. Now the perch goes in through these holes. The string goes through here. And it's even up so I can loop it. I'll fill the bottle up with gourmet bird seed. On goes the lid. And now it's time for a quick test. Yes, the seed pops out. Now I'll tie it up to this post. Great! Cafe de Wings is open for business. Clever idea, Lara. The seeds are rough enough so that friction between them stops them spilling out of the holes. But when a bird sits on the perch and removes a few seeds, gravity forces seeds higher in the bottle down to take their place. Letting gravity do the work is called gravity feed. Or in this case, a bird feed. Now to wait for a feathered feeding frenzy. Uh-oh, <laughs> not you guys again. Somehow I think my bird feed is gonna stay unused while you guys are here. What a great idea. It looks like everyone has food on the brain. <laughs> yep, Zach's caught a whiff of something tasty too. Olivia and I are getting in some last minute soccer practice before tomorrow's big game. Mmm, I recognise that smell. Definitely the fine flavour of barbecue. And it's coming from the next door. Mmm, thought so. You don't even have to taste a barbecue to know exactly what sort of flavours you're going to get. Olivia doesn't seem to think so, though. I think it's time she found out that you can pick flavours without tasting them. I'll begin by putting on a blindfold. I'll just go and get all the stuff I need. Now, for this little taste test, I have four glasses, a lemon, a jug of water, some milk, and orange flavoured soda. I'll fill the first glass with water, the second with milk, the third glass with the orange soda, and the last one, a little squeeze of lemon juice. Now, will Olivia pick the flavours just from smell? Water first. Any flavour? No. Good, because it doesn't have any. OK, let's try the milk. She seems to be able to taste it a little bit when she smells it. Now for the orange soda. Yep, she definitely can taste that. Now for the lemon. Yep, no mistaking that one. The senses of smell and taste are very closely linked. In fact, passages deep inside your nose are interconnected with the back of your mouth. So every time you smell something, tiny airborne molecules reach your tongue and trigger your sense of taste. And every time you eat or drink something, you also trigger your sense of smell. Wow! If that barbecue tastes as good as it smells, then it's time we paid a neighbourly visit. All we have to do is follow our noses. <laughs> Hot where we live. So Mohammed and I are experts at keeping cool. The best way is to go for a swim in your clothes. Then swing like crazy on this dolly while you're still dripping wet. Air moving across your wet clothes really cools you down. I wonder why. Let's find out, Mohammed. Okay, today it's 34 degrees Celsius, 93 for a night. Inside the bag goes a thermometer. Zip it up. Now I'm going to swing it around like this. Let's see if the air whizzing past cools it down. No, it's still 34 degrees. Okay, time to try a wet thermometer. I've got a jug of water here. Let's check its temperature. Good, it's the same as the air temperature. Now, I'll soak this cotton ball in the water and wrap it around the thermometer. There! 
feel the same temperature. Give it another good swing. This time, the air will be whizzing past the wet cotton. Now let's see what temperature we get. Oh, it's dropped to whole degrees. No wonder we're cooler with wet shirts. The temperature dropped because as drier air moved past, water evaporated from the cotton ball. This means the liquid water turned into a gas and floated away with the air. That process takes heat energy away from the thermometer, so the temperature drops. Hey Mohammed, next experiment, take this. Just trying to keep you cool, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it nice to have good friends to look after you like that? I'd be happy to do the same for you anytime, Donna. Uh, let's see how good friends Michael and Giovanni are getting on. Our Velcro dartboard is ready for action. And this ping pong ball will make the perfect missile. All it needs is some fluffy Velcro spots. This is the opposite part of the Velcro to the target. Six dots should do it. Now let's give it a try. Yay! Bullseye first time! What a legend! The Velcro is made up of hooks and loops. When the two sides are pressed together, the hooks catch the loops and form a bond. It works just as the hooks of a burr attach to the fur of an animal. The burr is actually a seed pod and by hooking on, it hitches a ride so it can scatter its seeds. Velcro was actually invented by a man tired of pulling burrs out of his dog's fur. Yep, inspiration can come from some unlikely places. Not bad. This is for the game. Yay, I win. Our Velcro dartboard is even better than the original. Oh, this is one seriously sticky target. But we can't stick around any longer. We've reached the end of the show. See, See you next time. time.